Greetings to you. My name is Tara Brabazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 45, Managing Referee Reports. Now this is a biggie. You've had a great idea, you've got a research plan, you've sent an article out to a journal, it's come back and you have referee reports. What are you going to do now? Well, this vlog helps you step by step move through that process from getting those referee reports through to a published article. And this is an intellectual vlog, but it's also an emotional vlog because the nature of receiving referee reports is it's highly emotional but it's also requiring high level intellectual work. So we have to configure strategies whereby your emotions are in check and you're creating the best intellectual work that you can at this point of your career. So really, when we are managing referee reports for everybody, it is a battle between emotion and intellect. And every single academic that you would speak to, no matter how junior, no matter how senior, has some horror stories, ah, has some horror stories about dreadful referee reports that they've received. But we very rarely share a lot of these reports and our emotional response to it because it gets a bit embarrassing. But of course, I'm not embarrassed. So I'm going to share a couple of the truly appalling referee reports that have arrived for me. And both of them, interestingly, happened when I was a very junior academic, a B-level academic, just trying to make my way in the academic world. So as a lot of you know, let's do these stories. So let me tell you the horror story. Uh, the first horror story comes from, as most of you know, one of the areas in which I work is in sport and physical cultures. And women have a bit of a tough ride through sport and physical cultures. And look, we still do to this day. It always amuses me when I'm sitting and chatting with academics who don't really know me and they talk about credit, cricket. And I have a chat about cricket and say, oh, Tara, you know about cricket. And I'm sort of saying, well, yes, I've written a book on cricket and a series of refereed articles about cricket. I know something about cricket. Oh, wow. So there is the assumption that, of course, women don't know about sport, even in academic and intellectual life. And I'm particularly a scholar of association football. And I write a lot on Australian association football. And particularly, I wrote the first refereed article on Perth Glory. But I nearly didn't because the referee reports were truly appalling. At three referee reports, one recommended minor corrections, two recommended major corrections. But the actual recommendation was not the issue for me. That was fine. The issue was the incredible verbiage, the nastiness, the rudeness, the bullying that came from the referee reports themselves. Every single one of those three referee reports stated this woman this woman has no right to write about association football. Women have nothing to say about association football. And if she's going to write on association football, she needs to state as a woman, comma, this is my commentary on it. Right, so the poor editor of the Australian Sports Journal wrote to me and said, look, Tara, I would like to apologise for the sexism of these reports. I'm aware of what I'm about to send you and I've never seen anything like this in my life, but if you can find a way to address the relatively minimal academic requests of you, then we'll find a way to move this forward. But he was aware it was a problem. So when I opened those reports up, I was stunned, I was shocked. It'd been a long time since I'd seen sexism of that scale really in your face. Like, you're a woman, you got no right to talk about this stuff. This is my business. Okay, right. So, of course, I did what most uh, people would do. I sat on my bed in Cardinia, which is the suburb across the way from Murdoch and Murdoch University. I sat on my bed with the referee reports and I did the ugly cry. <laughs> And I did the ugly cry for about 15 minutes or so. <laughs> All the mascara coming down, it was terrific. And uh, Steve, who we just got married at that point, so Steve Redhead came in and saw his wife in quite a state, sat down, read the referee reports, and he became very, very angry because Steve, even then, I was a very junior academic, 
He was very, very senior, already a professor, and he remains in the two or three most important scholars of football on the planet. But of course, the referees and the editor didn't know we were married. Separate names. You know what I'm talking about. So I said to Steve, look, is the article that bad? You just tell me. You can tell me. Is the article that bad? And he said, the article is excellent. Every time I would referee something like this, it would go straight through. He then sent it to five of his international colleagues working in football, and they said, it is a tremendous piece. I would have put it straight through. Say to Tara, she aimed too low. This is important advice. She aimed too low with the journal. Uh, the Australian sports community is known for its sexism. Uh, if you'd moved to an international journal, she would have had no problem. So there is nothing wrong with this article. It's excellent. Tell her to get it through, and I will cite it. It. So the decision we then made was I would address the minimal academic concerns, so ensure that Englishness, nationalism, theories of race were even more clear than I had made them in the previous article. So make it really clear, add 15 more references, which I did, but made sure that the line in the sand for me was at no point was I going to say as a woman writing about association football, at no point. So in other words, I didn't have to justify or explain writing about football as a woman. As a woman, I have a right to write on any topic I see fit, and I don't have to apologise for that. Boom. So that was the comment I said to the editor. I made the academic corrections. The article got through, which was terrific. And these days, if anybody writes about football, association football, and race and nationalism in Australia, they cite that article. So it was worth doing, but it was horrendous. But if I'd done a dummy spit, if I'd balked at the sexism and went, you know what, I'm not dealing with this, I would not have got that article through. So do think about that. One more example I'll give you, and this is Shani, this is important for you and all our education colleagues in particular in terms of interdisciplinarity, right? So about the same time, in fact, I think it was the same year, junior academic, I sent a cultural studies article to a cultural studies journal. This seems to be going well. Now, one of the referees, there are only two, one of the referees went straight through, no corrections, magnificent, published straight away, great. The other one rejected it because they stated, where is the empirical study? Where is the sociology? So the editor said, I'm not sure what's happened here. And I said, no, what's happened here is you've sent it out to a referee who believes that cultural studies is only about sociology, not semiotics, not linguistics, not environmental studies, not socio-legal studies, or indeed my paradigm, which is history. So she didn't realise that cultural studies is interdisciplinary. And he went, oops, I'm really sorry, what should we do about this? I said, no worries, just tell the referee that there are plenty of historians working in cultural studies and don't do it again. Uh, the senior professor who was a referee actually called me at work and apologised profusely and said, oh, I didn't know there are historians working in cultural studies. I later saw her at a conference, she continued to apologise, uh, but that article didn't go to that journal, went to an international cultural studies journal and went straight through. Okay, so from these stories, what I hope you grasp is every single academic has a truly appalling story about going through refereeing, okay? There are going to be really bumpy, dreadful moments in this that show racism, sexism, nationalism, xenophobia, homophobia, but also show ignorance. So you will get xenophobia, but you'll also get someone who just hasn't read enough and is assessing your work. That will happen, okay? But you need to focus on the prize, and the prize is getting published. And the referee reports are the last barrier you will confront to get to publication. So what this vlog is helping you do is to position yourself in relation to those referee reports so you can get this article published. So this is a how-to guide. So let's do it. Right. So referee reports have four levels. Rejected, accepted with major corrections, accepted with minor corrections, and straight through accepted thanks for playing. Right. Now, most reports in their combinations come back 
as accepted with minor changes, minor corrections, accepted with major corrections, okay? So that's the common model. If you get back major corrections, don't go, oh, no, 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 major revisions, I'm frightened. Don't be. Most people get that in some form, okay? So the point at, you, at which you receive those reports, I want you to cut away all emotion. Now let me show you how to do this, okay? So you get the referee reports. I want you to print them out. Don't read them on the screen. Print them out. Get them on paper. Then get yourself a highlighter pen. You know the things, the yellow, the orange, the green? Get yourself a highlighter pen and go through the reports and only highlight the intellectual issues to change or address in the reports. Only highlight the intellectual issues. So get rid of all the personal stuff, the sort of a bit bitchy stuff, get rid of all the sort of nasty stuff. Just don't read it anymore. Read it once, get the content out that is the scholarly content, and then you've got those reports to work off. So they're your new reports, the highlighted phrases, right? Now, I want you to return back to your computer and turn on tracked changes onto your Word document. Then Next stage, I want you to construct a table in Word, and that table has three headings for me. The referee number, so referee A, B, C, one, two, three. Their critique, second column. Third column, how you addressed it. So the referee, what they suggested, recommended, and how you addressed it. Three columns in a table. So. Now, I want to talk through now about why I've used the word addressing the comments here. Now, this is significant. You do not have to agree with the referee comments. You simply have to address them. Now, remember, a lot of the comments will improve the article. So just go, that's a great idea. Thanks for playing. That's a great idea. Thanks for playing. Improve the article. That's terrific. But if something a bit ambivalent or weird pops up, you do have to address it but it doesn't mean you agree with it. You may address it in a different way with a new scholar, a new reference, a new theorist, a new way of assessing that data set, yeah? So address it doesn't mean you have to agree with it. Now, fine, correct, address. Now, every now and again, something truly weird will appear in a referee report. And you do have the right to say, dude, you are dreaming. Dude, you are dreaming. So, for example, last year I received a referee report, and can I say there were three referee reports, very good. They improved the article, it was already a very good article, and the three referee reports made it a fantastic article, which I'll enter in the REF, so I'm very grateful to the referees. But in one of the three referees, there was a bonkers bit, and that is they cited Wikipedia. Well, so I addressed everything, corrected everything, sent back the track changes and the table and said, thank you so much, this article has been improved, I'm really thrilled about this. But by the way, about that comment about Wikipedia, I didn't address that. I removed Wikipedia from first year undergraduate papers, just so you know. So you might like to suggest to the referee that Wikipedia reduced his credibility somewhat. So the editor of the journal got back in touch with me, said, absolutely, I understand. I raised that issue with the referee, and I've now put that in the instructions for referees. Don't cite Wikipedia. That's perhaps inappropriate. Boom. So let's start with the really negative report. Now, this is important. So you get the rejection, okay? Now, rejection hurts. That's why it's rejection. Oh, I've been rejected. Rejection hurts. So remember I said in our last vlog, when we were talking about accepting and working out what journal your article was going to go into. Remember you're working through which journal is appropriate for the article. And remember I said, I want you to have a plan B and a plan C. I want you to find three journals. Now the reason I said that is for this scenario. So you've been rejected. You've been rejected. So get the negative reports, print them out, Use the highlighter, cool, cool, cool. See if there's anything that you could learn that does actually improve the article. Make those changes immediately and send it out immediately again on the day you get those reports. That's what I do. I get the reports, I make the corrections, send it out the same day. Don't fester, 
don't worry don't get emotional do the work and then send it to your B journal okay so I sent an article out on Friday I'm sending an article out tomorrow Monday an article out Tuesday so I have an A journal a B journal and a C journal and if the A journal goes no nah, not terribly interested bang bang make the changes straight out to B so if the rejection comes in make the changes move on girlfriend move on no emotion no no time wasting get on with your life okay now the key is, I never want you to give up. I want you to believe in your research. I want you to believe that that research is going to find an audience. So I've got to keep you believing. And I remember Juan Miguel Campanaro recently made a fascinating analysis. It was a great article, this, where he worked through and showed that some of the most frequently cited articles on the planet were rejected first by a journal. So some of the most frequently cited stuff was rejected. So never worry about the rejection. He used the argument that the truly original research, the truly original articles and papers are missed by referees because they're looking for synthesis or incremental improvement. So the big ticket, fantastic research is often missed by referees. So don't give up on it. Another odd combination that emerges from the referees is one loved it straight through and one went bonkers one went reject that does happen every now and again and it often happens on disciplinary parameters so it's an interdisciplinary issue Shani where perhaps the wrong referee was picked for the disciplinary basis of the article so in that case where one's gone through if it has happened on disciplinary grounds that there's been a rejection write to the editor explain what has occurred here so this is an historical piece and this is sociology or people were after an empirical quant piece and this is theoretical, if you can explain it in that way, then a new referee can be summoned to replace the negative review. So that's always an option too. But the key bit of advice, if you get nothing else out of this vlog, I hope it is this, that if you get referee reports that are minor or major revise and resubmit, right? So minor revisions, major revisions, do do that. Don't do a dummy spit, please. Don't do a dummy spit. Don't go, oh, I'm offended. Oh, isn't that you? No, oh, no, no. I can't, well, I can't be bothered. Don't be lazy and, and don't respond emotionally because you're going to get there. If you can actually just make those changes, the highlighted changes on those referee reports, you will get that, that article. So if it's minor or major revision submission, do it. Do the work. Get the article through. Don't do a dummy spit. Focus on the prize of getting that article published. And remember, relax yourself, no emotion. Use that highlighter. Go through each correction. Make one correction at a time. It's like walking one correction at a time until it is finished. One last bit of advice with that major and minor correction too. So you've made all the corrections. Everything's in the table. Everything's in track changes on the document. Cool. What I want you to do now is save the document with the track changes, right? So that can be sent to the editor to show the changes. But then what I want you to do is save again for uh, all track changes have been embedded, right? So get the clean copy for yourself, print that out and read that once more. And the reason why I'm saying that is it is your article. And obviously if it's co-authored, it's great for all the co-authors to do this too. But read it once cleanly. So make sure it is the article that you want to get published because sometimes the corrections pull you away from the original intent of the article. So give it one last read, get the co-authors to give it one last read and make sure you're proud of it and it's what you want to say. Okay, so the key word I want you to think about when we're managing referee reports is persistence. Yes, you are going to confront rudeness, silliness, bullying and ignorance. You are going to confront that. But you will prevail if you persist. One article at a time. That's how you build a career. So I believe in refereeing, I believe in peer review, it is the punctuation, it is the foundation of what we do in academic life. Peer review is incredibly important, but at its worst, it shows rudeness, 
it shows randomness and yes it shows ignorance and ignorance I think upsets me most if we've got referees that haven't actually read the contemporary literature and they're citing stuff from 10 years ago and you're getting bent out of shape because you've actually done the heavy lifting and the hard work that still does get me going a little bit you will confront ignorance and you just need to find ways to manage it but there are so many fantastic stories out there guys of articles being rejected from one journal and there's a great case of a theorem being rejected and it went on to win a Nobel Prize okay and there's a great article I read when I was prepping this vlog for you this week where it was a great Canadian article where they showed all the articles that had been knocked back rejected from US based journals they went on to be accepted in Canadian journals and then went on to win prizes for the best article of the year. You know, all these different prizes. It's just fantastic. So just remember that the really original, powerful articles often have a bit of a tough way through refereeing because they are innovative, because they are original. And just remember, if you disagree with a referee, that's absolutely fine. It really is. But you need to explain it. If you're talking to the editor, you need to make the argument rather than assume the argument. And that argument is made intellectually, not emotionally. So as always, I wish you well. I want you to believe in your research and I want you to believe in yourself. You can do it. I wish you love, light and peace. Tia.